Let's see if we can do a duck this time. A special duck. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to a fun little painting project. This is being done on a five by seven piece of mat board, which you get from picture framing shops or from the picture framing area of your craft store. I bought a little packet of them for very cheap because they're off cuts. I'm going to be painting with the Arteza gouache. This is a regular gouache, not an acrylic gouache, which means that with regular gouache, you can blend and make your colors move through different layers. And you can layer light colors over dark colors. You can do that with the acrylic gouache also. I have to my right a little glass cutting board it is tempered glass, which means that if something happened and I happen to drop it, it isn't going to break. I am drawing with a watercolor pencil. This is the Arteza cream colored watercolor pencil. And I just chose it because you could see it on the black. Now I do want to draw the whole thing, but just fair warning, this picture goes through a couple stages in the drawing process. So if you want to be able to get onto the painting more quickly, I do have a traceable pattern on my website at deliberatelycreative.com. The link is down below in the more information and I have it on my traceables and patterns page or my patterns and traceables page. I think that's the direction it goes. But I am going to try and start drawing whatever it is we're doing on my Monday videos. So Monday videos, I'm going to do the drawing first and then we'll get to the painting. This drawing took me about 10 minutes to do and that was with just sitting down and looking at the reference that I have up there in the top corner and working it out from there. Sometimes when you work things out for the first time and you haven't drawn it ever before, you don't make the right choices when you first start out. It's okay. That's why we have an eraser because watercolor pencil, when you draw lightly, can actually be erased. And if you use a kneaded eraser, you're not gonna damage the paper surface that you're drawing on. Now I am drawing lightly. I am not pressing hard into the surface of the paper. Now I drew that upside down half circle. Then I drew the breast going up to the neck and a circle for the head. I end up deciding that it's not proportioned quite right. He looks a little bit short and stubby and I'm not happy. So then I will take, after I figure it out right here, yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to show the stages and steps that you go through, at least I do, so that others know people who draw or paint all the time still go through stages and steps when they're drawing something unfamiliar to them. And I'm trying to figure it out and see if I can make this work. And, you know, it's like, uh, it's not working. And no matter what I do, I can't make that work. I need to stretch him up and make him wider. So what do you do? You pull out the eraser and you go for it. Don't be so tied to your first drawing that you put down on the paper or on a canvas whatever it is, don't be tied to the first thing you draw down because more often than not, you're going to have to make some changes. Now, see here, I'm figuring out, all right, this is the area under his chin. This is the neck. This is where it joins into his bill. And, you know, my drawing may not be totally perfect, but when we're done with the painting, it looks enough like a wood duck that people think wood duck when they see it. 
and really and truly, uh, that's all that matters to me. I am not doing this to make a perfect representation of this bird. Because if I were, I would just take that photograph and use it. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to build this bird up, pull him out of this black background. Now I will be using black paint on here because the black gouache is blacker than that background. And I like that. I like that we will be able to build deeper shadows and have more of a definition because I am not going to paint that whole background out with water. I am going to do just enough with the reflection so it looks like he's sitting in water, but he's not. He's on dry paper and, you know, this is all an illusion and that's all that art is. Art is taking flat pieces of something. Well, this art, there's there's 3D art. There's things that you can put your hands on and pick up and carry around. But this type of art is taking a 2D surface and rendering something that lives in three dimensions. You know, putting his little uh, feathers that are going down the back of his back of his head, like the little um, fringe, but instead of it hanging over his eyes, it hangs down the back of his head. And see, again, I didn't get it quite right. I want to make him deeper, longer, make him look like he has more presence because his body was too small. And again, you can do that. You can make it bigger. You can make it wider. You can make it stretch out some. And nobody knows at the end how much time you took to make your painting or to make the initial drawing or if you even drew the initial drawing because there is a traceable, but you don't have to tell people that you traced to get the drawing on so that you could paint it. It's still real art. It is still real art. You are an artist when you create something, anything. As soon as you start putting pencil to paper to represent something, as soon as you put paint on paper or canvas or wood or glass or metal or fabric, as soon as you start doing something that makes art, makes something pretty, makes something ugly, makes something new that's never existed before. You're making art and it doesn't matter how you get the drawing on there. You could grid this. You could use a projector. You can use the downloadable traceable and put graphite chalk on the back of the paper and then trace it onto the surface. There are master painters that traced. You are allowed to do that. It does not make you not a painter or not an artist if you trace. The only people that get really hung up about it are people generally who don't do art and they don't know what it takes to create a piece of artwork. There's a tool called the uh, Lucy, which shows a reflection onto a piece of glass of an object, and you look down through it and you trace the reflection that you see on the paper. Or there's a thing called the camera obscura, which is basically a giant box camera that shows a reflection of what's outside. When I was working in a middle school, we had a teacher that was doing science. He changed his whole classroom into a giant pinhole camera. That's all a camera obscura is, is a pinhole camera. And it shows a, showed a reflection of the trees and the cars and the buildings outside of his classroom through a tiny hole that he had 
put in the um, black paper that he had covered his windows with one little hole and he found the spot where the light was coming through and the reflection was shining it was so cool and he traced the picture of what was outside nobody believed in his classroom in any of the classes that that was something that would happen i think that's cool i think it's showing that science and art can be tied together and now we're going on to the water. Putting in the reflection, all we're doing is looking at that sort of wavy, out of focus duck and drawing what we see. I, but I'm not drawing it perfectly because guys, this is out of focus. And it's going to be wavy and the water lines are going to be going through it. And you don't have to have a perfect representation here. We're going to be putting our paint on and having some fun. All right, we're going to make a magic mix of brown. This brown is made with violet and orange. In this Arteza gouache paint, when you mix the violet gouache with the orange, it makes the most beautiful burnt sienna brown. And it's perfect for getting the breast of this duck in. Now, my colors are not going to be exactly the same as the reference. Am I worried about that? No, I'm not. Because this is one duck. And if you put a series of wood ducks alongside of each other, their coloring is going to be different. And the lighting could have been different. Or the, you know, just the time of day was different. But every duck is different. So don't get tied to having to make the color exactly perfect. We're painting it on top of black. That's going to change the color also. And it will make the colors, um, because the black is underneath of it, it sort of absorbs some of the color, the reflection of the light off of that gouache. And that's cool. Now, right now you see it's wet. And as it dries, this dark color is going to get lighter. And that's something that gouache does. Light colors will go a little bit darker or deeper. Dark colors will go a little bit lighter when you uh, see it when it's all dry. And you can see it kind of starting to dry right there in front of you already. And I'm trying to work back and forth on this. I'm doing the uh, breast above the water, then I'm doing the breast below. Now in the photograph, the picture of the duck below is almost exactly the same color as the duck above. And I didn't, I made an artistic choice. You can do that as an artist. You can make an artistic choice. You can say, you know what? I don't care if it's this way in quote unquote real life. Let's do it the way our heart wants us to do it, the way we are interested in showing this. So now you see how that gouache above the waterline has gotten lighter as it has dried. Isn't that weird? Isn't that cool? You can use that to your advantage when you know what the paint does. And down here, I'm not going to paint him in solid. I'm leaving some of the black of the board in, you know, varying amounts that will give us that sort of rippled feeling or shadows going through this duck. Start working in your shadows. See how I work that in there? You start working in your variations of tone. And to do that, I added a little bit more purple, a little bit more of that violet to the, the brown tone that we had created. 
so we can start getting some variations. Now, I know that there are some people who think gouache has to always be something. It always has to be thick like yogurt, or it always has to be thin like a uh, table cream. It, gouache doesn't always have to be anything. You have options. You have the ability to vary your tone just by varying the thickness of the paint. Now, if you go over an area with too wet of a brush and you rub back and forth, you will lift the paint underneath. So you can see right here that I went over the brush was a little bit too wet and I kind of lifted that undertone of paint out. I did want to remind you that every time you put your brush into water, you need to use something to wipe that silver ferrule off so you don't have any strange little drips of water. Now for the back, it looks like black. This really isn't black yet though. This is brown with black. It's sort of a burnt sienna with more black added to it. I did add black to it, but it's not straight black yet. There will be some straight black, but not quite yet. So back to the let things dry before you go back over an area. It gives you more options. I am not drying this between areas, but I'm trying to go to another area and work for a little while. And then I'll come back and I'll work on the breast some more. Then I'll come back and I'll work on his wings. Then I'll come back and work on his back again. I'll move up and work on his head. You sort of bounce around in this type of painting. So you don't start and make a fully rendered painting just going from left to right if you're a right-handed person with gouache because you do have to let things dry between layers. It doesn't take that long to dry. Uh, it's actually quite quick, but if it's not drying fast enough for you, you can use a hairdryer on a low heat or you could use a embossing tool it would be a higher heat. You just hold it back away from your paint. This paint gouache really does color shift because you're going from that wet state to the dry state. And since it is like watercolor, a water media with pigment and gum Arabic, they, um, they have certain transparency issues. So then with gouache, they add something that's called an opacifier, and it usually has some type of chalkiness to it, which really does show the, um, it really does show, how do I want to put this? You know, it's okay for you to hear me doing my process of thought here too. Because, you know, that way you, you get the, the feeling of being here in the studio with me as I'm doing this also. So I'm thinking about it. And it, the opacifiers make the paint opaque. It also gives it that chalky, velvety type of look. And that is what I totally am in love with right now with gouache versus watercolor. Another reason why I really like the gouache is because gouache you can layer light colors over dark colors and you can blend your colors. So right now I'm putting cream, which was mixed with a little touch of brown and white to give me that kind of creamy look. It's an off white, it is not perfect. And I'm tapping it in with the tip of the brush. So you're still getting some texture of the the dark color underneath coming through because thin layers of gouache will be transparent-ish. They will get a chalky look to them, but they'll be transparent-y. 
And that's, again, something that I'm really enjoying about gouache. Now, I know that many people get uh, scared off by trying different types of media. And I have never been one of those people that gets scared by media, watercolor, acrylic. I've even done oil painting. I haven't done any oil painting on my channel because I've only done a couple oil paintings. But if anybody's interested, you can leave a comment down below this video and let me know if you want to see me muddle my way through an oil painting. Maybe I could try doing a Bob Ross or something. I know that those are things people like to see people fail doing Bob Ross. So, you know, I can do a Bob Ross and fail at it or succeed. I don't know because I've never tried. And that's kind of exciting to try something you've never done and not be worried if you fail. Because what is failure? What really is failing is not trying. That's where the only failure is. The only failure in art is if you don't try to do something. Now, you may not get the expected outcome or the outcome that you would really like to have. That's not a failure, though. And we need to get that feeling of joy just in the doing and not worry about it looking like the photograph or looking like what the teacher got. Because, you know, the teacher's been working at that art probably a lot longer than you have. And they still fail, too. And they probably have practiced whatever it is many, many times. Now, I'm one of those sort of oddball teachers where I learn something new and I turn around immediately after the first time doing it and teach it to somebody else because that's how I learn. I learn by teaching you what I'm learning. And it builds more pathways in my brain. It builds confidence in my ability to think on my feet and to work things out. And if working things out means stopping halfway through and erasing or changing something that I ended up not being happy with, that's okay. Now this shadow under his chin, under his bill and under the chin area, this just makes me happy because it works out so well. Just adding a little bit of black to that cream color and layering it on top. As long as you're gentle, as you're laying your colors down, it's going to be okay. Just don't scrub it in. Now, if I scrubbed it in, I'd actually be going down to the black background, and that would work to my favor too. So don't be worried. Now, if you don't have a black background to put your painting onto, you can just grab some black paint. Go for something that's a little more matte or black gesso and coat a piece of watercolor paper with black gesso or find a black watercolor paper. I know there is some black watercolor paper out there. I have seen it, but right now I don't know where it is. I have to go on to Amazon or on to Jerry's and do a little search. Now, right here, I didn't quite like how thick underneath of his bill was getting. So I took a wet brush and I just pushed the paint back. <laughs> you can do that. Oh, it's so cool because you have undo with your gouache. You can undo things and you don't have to have 50 bazillion layers like you would with an acrylic. Acrylic, you can undo if it's wet or if it's recently wet. But gouache, the regular gouache, you can actually undo almost all the way back to the paper. So 
just cut yourself some slack. You know, we may not have control Z, just like you do on a digital, but you've got a wet brush and a dry paper towel. You can clean it up. And that's one of those other really cool things. Now, something else you need to know about gouache, you don't need to put a ton of paint out. It goes a long, long way. Oh, this just makes me happy. When you put the wiggle into that brush going down onto the water, it all of a sudden starts looking really like the water is wiggling. Now, if you can kind of match up the wiggle on the left and the right, it gives more of that idea of the, the water is rippling. But, you know, the reflections in the water don't actually have, you know how you get those white reflections? Oh, there, I'm wiping the water bead that got onto the silver ferrule. Remember to get those off because they will just drip down at the most inopportune time. I'm putting straight black next to that white ripple now. And I'm rippling it on just like I did the white. I'm just working it in alongside the edge of the white. And then we're going to go in and start putting in the head. Even though we haven't put the head up above yet, since I have that dark color on my brush already, use the paint. Instead of swishing it off into your jar of water, use the paint that's on your brush and put it someplace where it needs to go. But see, I'm not worried about making it look exactly like the, photo the photographer caught. I'm not going to give him two eyes down here. He's only going to get the one. If I even put the eye in, you'll have to stick around to see if the eye actually goes in. And I hope you do stick around to see. Now, I am just using that same black and I'm still putting in those ripples and reflections. You know, you don't, again, you don't stick to one spot on these types of paintings. Working your way around, I'm giving the top of the bird more time to settle in, <laughs> more time for the paint to dry. I'm picking up some more of the cream to go down here and put that area under his neck, but I'm still not going to make it uh, solid and perfect and he's not going to have the same type of shadows and um, in that reflection he's getting just some lightly worked in areas a little bit of the highlights a little bit of the white that's under his chin a little bit of the white that's going up the back of his head you don't have to make this absolutely match because it's wiggling in the water and that's also one of those things you don't, please don't be tied to making something super specifically, absolutely 100% photo realistic. Like I said earlier, if I wanted a photo, I'd have the photo. I don't have to make a painting of it to have the photo. Now, if being hyper realistic is your style, and that's what you want to do. Oh my gosh, have fun, enjoy it, share what you do. And everybody else that paints the way I do or paints the way they do, share with me on Deliberately Creative on Facebook or tag me if you post it on Instagram, tag at Deliberately Creative. I would love to come and click on that heart for you and give you my total admiration for doing a lesson from some person you've never met on YouTube because this is my actual job that I do. My job that I chose for myself is to make art lessons and help people find their own creative expression. So now we're back to describing a little bit what's going on on this painting. And right now I'm still working on that reflection. 
I have gone in with a slightly damp brush and I'm sort of lifting out a line right along the bottom of where the duck is sitting in the water. And what that does is it sort of separates that more in focus part of the duck above. And then it gives me a place to put that little light highlight because right around the duck, there's sort of those rings that he's sort of bouncing and rippling out around from him. They're not perfect. And I really don't spend a lot of time on them because I, I'm trying to get this painting done as quickly as I can in a way that you can accomplish it also. So I'm not doing any fast forward in this video. Just I'm just moving through at a steady pace. It's going to take a little over an hour to complete this painting. And for some people, they'll say, oh my gosh, that's forever. And other people will be like, Oh, really? It only takes an hour? Score! Because many people, myself included, when a video only takes an hour or a whole painting only takes an hour, that's like really, really fast. <laughs> now, I've done some that are really small that I've gotten done in half an hour. This one I think it would probably take me about the same amount of time if I had a black background, if I was doing an 11 by 14 or this five by seven. I think it would take me about the same amount of time because the 11 by 14, your features and things are spread out a little more. So you can do some broader strokes to kind of fill them in. So now I'm taking black and the violet and mixing them together to make a really not quite perfectly black. It's got a little hint of that purpley tone to it, just enough to make it not perfectly black. And I'm going to start detailing on the head. You know, the details can be a little bit finicky if you want them to be. They can be very basic also. You don't have to do all the top lines. You don't have to do all of the detail to get this duck to look like a wood duck. And I'm just doing it, I'm mapping the colors in like a, uh, like blocking in. So I'm blocking in those dark shadows. Uh-huh, I had a drip on there. It almost fell off. So, <laughs> Don't, don't worry if you are getting tired at this point, you can set this to the side and come back to it later because it's not going to ruin the painting for you to come back at a later time and continue. You can actually come back months from now, years from now and put a wet brush on here and move the paint around. So, oh, that brings something else up. If you are doing this and you want this painting to be around for a long time, you have a few options. The best option is to get it framed under UV protecting glass with a mat to give it spacing between the glass and the painting, just like you would do with a nice watercolor painting. You don't want the glass touching the actual paint because moisture can get inside and it can actually grow mold. You don't want that to happen. You use a mat, just like the mat board that we're doing the painting on, they would use a one or two mats and make an air gap between the painting and the glass in a nice frame. But you know, you can use a dollar store frame too, as long as you use an acid free uh, mat to give you that separation. Don't, don't think you have to go spend, you know, custom framing, especially if you are working in standard sizes, five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20. Those are all standard sizes where you can find frames 
at thrift stores and at the craft store. So you don't have to spend bazillions of custom framing money. Now, if this, if this ends up being like, oh my gosh, this is the best wood duck I've ever seen. I am so excited. I want to get it custom framed. Go for it. At that point, make sure that they use the UV glass, your acid-free mats. This is an acid-free mat. Pretty much all framing shop mats are acid-free. So you're pretty lucky on that. All right, so now what I've done is I've picked up some crimson and mixed it with the orange. The crimson with the orange makes a really deep red orange or orange red, depending on how much red you have versus how much orange. But the bill on this particular duck has red and black and yellow on it. But I didn't want just straight crimson. Uh, if you had a cadmium type red, that would work here because it's a um, orangey type red. The red I had out was a crimson, so that's what I used, but I mixed it with some of that orange and it just gave this really pretty rich red-orange color. So, you know, play with your paints. See what the colors do. The paint, that red paint, is still on my brush. I'm going to take it down and put the red on the bill in the water. I'm using my finger to kind of blur it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be as sharp as the red up on the bill. I'm even putting the red in that would be reflecting from the eye because this guy has this really crazy red rim around his eye and his eyeball itself, the, the iris color is red. But it's not like pink. It's, you know, an actual red color. So, you know, it's not like the, the like rat eye red or rat eye pink. This guy has the coolest, just almost dragon eye type of red. I think that's what I want to say. It's kind of a dragon eye red. Now I want to get some shadow around the actual eyeball. And I am going to uh, put that in. I will make this bigger here for you to be able to see a little bit better. I am putting that right around the actual eyeball. I'm going to put that darker tone right along the bill to give the separation of the top and the bottom. Define some of those edges and define the nostril. You know, the nostril is way out there on that bill. <laughs> It's crazy, but that's where it is. And you can feel that this duck has presence in the water. He has weight in the water. Um, I don't know how to say it except that gouache just gives weight to things in a way that watercolor gives delicacy and gouache can give it more weight. I don't know. That's the way my brain sees it. Now, you might see it in a totally different way. And right now, you might see his breast as being all kinds of patchy weirdness. It's going to work out just fine. Because what I did is I put those patches of darker colors in places where the shadows are. In places where the shadows are kind of... Um, resting underneath of the feathers. Now I'm using some straight violet and starting to put in some of the places where he he actually has iridescence and I'm not going to get the iridescence so much but I'm going to get the color in here and this part just just makes my my heart go pitter pat. I love doing these little details like this. It's it just gives me a lot of joy to be able to put these colors in and all of a sudden you see his eye pop out. You see his eye open up or you see the, that shadow that was under his chin just sort of lift his head out away from the paper, away from the board. You see the weight of this 
duck sitting in the water with the ripples going around him, that shimmer going across the reflection on the, on the water. Those things just make this painting more special. And you've seen those things didn't take a lot of time to do. They don't take a lot of skill to put in for this painting the way I'm laying it in. Now, you can take much more time, and many of you are so much more skilled than I am when it comes to painting. I am in total awe of so many of you when you share your paintings with me. Now, I'm putting that highlight around the nostril. It's on top of his bill. It sort of shimmers, and if you look at it, his whole bill isn't red. You don't see all the red. You don't see all of the black. There's multiple colors on his bill. There's shadows and there's highlights and there's the red color and there's even a bright yellow that's going to go on here. You, it, it just is amazing to me how things can reflect what's around them in nature. So the sky was probably a cloudy day when this little guy got his picture taken. And what's reflecting off of his bill is what was in the sky. So if it had been a bright sunny day, you might have seen a blue cast on his bill, or you might have seen uh, more of the red show up. You know, you look at the pictures and look at your reference. And I say, with all of my heart, use references for things you have never drawn before. I would have totally messed this duck up if I hadn't had the reference. If I was just trying to draw this wood duck out of my memory, with no reference, he would have had probably a way bigger head and a tinier body, and he wouldn't have that feeling of presence that you get when you use a reference. Even if you're painting abstractly and you're painting the feeling of the duck just in colors, there's a difference to when you have a reference to give you that sense of what you're emotionally putting down on the paper. Now this is some ultramarine blue that I am working out here because there's a shine of some blue. Now all of these are dark colors going on here right now. I will add a little bit of white to these colors at certain points to make them pop up a little bit, to make them show themselves a little more. But right now, I'm mapping it out. There's still, I mean, you could say this is still just an underpainting, but all of a sudden, the final details go on, and boom, it's a fold blown painting. So many of these things only need one more layer on top or maybe two layers on top. And oh my gosh, I would love <laughs> to just throw on some music and let this play for a little while. My voice is starting to get a little bit stressed and I'm kind of just running out of things to say. <laughs> so you know, I am going to keep talking because so many of my, my students, my community, they like to have somebody talking in the background while they're doing something else. If you are one of those people that likes to turn my videos on and just lets them play in the background, like I'm chatting over in the corner in your studio, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate being that person that can do that for you. You know, I'm going to tear up because that really is something that's important to me. Now, this green, 
just sort of starts to pop him out a little more. I put some yellow into the green. This is sap green and lemon yellow. And I'm there's just something about those combinations. If I wanted to tone the green down, I'd use the orange because the orange is more towards the red side and it would tone it down a little bit and make it earthier. But I wanted a little bit more of the almost a peacock green because if you look closely at the reference, it feels like his head has almost a peacock feeling to it. So we're going to go get some more of that yellow. And sometimes when the paint gets wet, you have to work it a little while. And you see that I've got some green on my brush and I'm rubbing on, on that yellow. It's okay. I'm fine with that. If I didn't want any of that green to be there, I could just wet that down with a little bit more water and wipe it off with a paper towel. And then I'd be back to the pure bright yellow. Yeah, I keep having, oh, when you have too much water in the bristles of your brush, this is a really good tip. Take a paper towel and lay the belly of the brush. That's the thick part in the bristles. Lay that belly in the, of the brush against a paper towel and it will absorb some of the water out of the bristles and give you a thicker application of your paint without having to go and mix more of the paint up or soften it up off of your uh, palette. Now, look at how bright that is, how pretty that is. That's actually going to get a little bit deeper and brighter. But you see how now his beak is all his bill is almost completely done. There might be just a little bit more of some detail on here, but not much. There's a bit of a dark spot that's on the left hand side of his bill. Just a touch, not a lot. So we just keep putting small details in. Now there's still some things that we have to get done here the finishing of the breast of this bird, the final details and things like that. We're about 15 minutes away from finishing up. So I want to thank you for sticking around here with me. If you made it this far in the video, could you leave a comment down below and say what you think of it so far? I would like to know if you want to see more waterfowl let me know. Or if you have a special type of animal that really makes your heart go pitter pat, I'd love to do more videos of things that people want to see, not just things that I think maybe people want to see. You know, that would help me out. And I hope that these videos are helping you out. One, in learning how I do it, maybe learning some tips and some tricks. And I also would like to know if you have any other mediums that you like to use or that you would like to learn how to use. I'm really loving doing gouache. I like it more than straight watercolor because I can do watercolor effects with gouache and do these more layered types of paintings. But I do acrylic. I can do colored pencil and pen and ink. So pretty much the sky's the limit. Let me know what you want to do. If you have a chance, would you please click that like button and make sure that you share these videos with your friends because for some reason, YouTube has said not enough people like my videos for them to want to share them out. And I'm kind of confused by that because everybody who watches my videos seems to like them. Go figure. And make sure that you click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go out. Turn on all the notifications though. I just looked. Only 10,000 of my almost 90,000 subscribers, only 10,000 have notifications turned on. So no wonder nobody's watching my videos. But that is going to change with your help. So now I have been putting some of the 
crimson and orange mixed together to brighten up that fun little eyeball. I have also been doing some straight crimson just because I want to give it that little bit of punch. That's using that number four Mimic Squirrel Synthetic Brush. And all the information for the materials, like I said earlier, is down below in the description box below the video. And that includes affiliate links for things. So I will make a small commission if you happen to purchase anything from those links. And you know, when you make a purchase from those links, it never changes what you pay. It's just like a finder's fee from the companies that are giving me the opportunity to make a little bit of money. So thank you very much for your support. I do have a Patreon if you're interested also. I know this sounds like a lot of commercially stuff, but sometimes people who stick with me this long in a video, you're the ones that are my supporters anyway. And I want to thank you for being there. And if you want to support on Patreon, that's awesome. You don't have to, but it helps me out. All right, we're going to start putting the texture in on his chest and I am using that creamy colored paint and just putting lots of little dots and the whole thing is the, his whole chest is going to get covered with dots and then I'm going to wipe over everything and make it less uh, less strong less like uh, somebody went and went dot 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 you know Right now it looks a little, um, it actually looks a little folk art right here on his chest. And oh, if you're interested in some folk art birds or butterflies or moths or little houses, let me know in the comments below. You guys that stick with me this long in a video, you're the ones that I wanna hear from because you're the ones that are supporting my channel by watching my videos. Watching the videos all the way through lets YouTube know people like the video, they're watching it. And I really appreciate being part of your studio time. Like I said earlier, if you just turn these videos on and have me chattering along in the background, I'm like a little bit of company. I do that with a lot of videos, a lot of art videos. I will just go and turn their video on and work on my own thing and look up and see whatever it is they're working on. And it it's kind of like being in a big art classroom where you can look across and see what other people are doing while you're working on your own things. And it sometimes can give you a little bit of perspective on your own work. Oh, now I'm taking some of that cream color and I watered it down quite a bit and I'm putting the reflection in on the back feathers because his back is really dark. By putting that shiny reflection on, it pops it out from the background because I'm not painting a background in here. I am only painting the duck and the water that he's sitting in, in front of him. That, that whole background behind him is actually water also, but I thought it might be a little confusing. So right now I'm letting that chest, all those bubble, the little spots dry while I'm putting in that reflection on his back. It also makes his neck and chest seem to come more forward when you lighten up that black in the back behind it. It gives you more of a contrast and a separation but you don't want to use pure white. You want it to be something softer. So it's kind of a grayed out creamy white color. And now I am going to take a little bit of black in and a, but quite a bit of water. And I'm just blending it out, smoothing it out. Now, looking back at this, I'm going, is my water really crooked? But then when I look at the actual painting in my hands, no, the water isn't really tipped. It's the angle of my camera <laughs> and the angle of the board on my, on my table in front of me because I was working on a slight slope. I have to tilt my, my painting surface to make it easier for my hands. Oh yeah, 
And, you know, put some of that texture down in the water too. It's reflecting down there. I don't do it completely, you know, realistically, like we were talking earlier. But now we're going in and I'm just picking up some of the gouache that's already there and moving it over the dots. And look how it melds that bright white, but wasn't really bright white, but that bright color back into the feathers and makes it feel a little more natural. I'm not speeding up any of this. I could, this is very repetitious stuff, but I want you to see this entire painting from drawing to finished painting pretty much in real time. I have trimmed out a couple spots where I stopped for a period of time, but all of the painting you're seeing from beginning to end. Do you like this type of painting? Do you like this type of lesson where I pretty much just go straight through? And would you rather have more live shows? Leave that comment down below. See, I'm asking for a lot of stuff right now. If you want to leave me comments and tell me what you want and what you like. I appreciate that. Just remember that I'm doing this for free on YouTube and I always appreciate constructive comments and comments that are kind. So putting in the shadows, trying to get a little more depth and detail going here. I've been picking up the brown that was made from that violet and orange with a little bit of black added to it to strengthen up some of the shadows. I'm sort of just putzing along now. I'm just picking up colors that were already mixed on the palette and putting them in places. <laughs> A lot of this is as you are working with any material, you get to learn how they interact with each other, how the different colors interact how dry paint interacts with the wet paint, how a wet brush interacts with dry paint. It's actually quite fun, to, to me at least, to learn more, to keep learning. And I think that that's something that, especially in this age of everything is digital and electronic, I really enjoy having something that's physical in my hands, a paintbrush and paint, paper, canvas, wood, whatever I'm painting on, and having a physical thing in my hands that didn't require anything electronic to make it. Now, don't get me wrong. I love electronics. I love this digital age. I love being able to connect with you. And I wouldn't be able to do that as easily if it was just to be done in person because my reach would be so much smaller. My ability to have a conversation artistically with someone in the UK, someone in Australia, someone in Japan, someone in India, I wouldn't have as many opportunities to have those types of conversations this way. Our community is huge and our community is amazing. And I love all of the artists that are sharing. Even if I don't love their art all the time, I still love that these artists are sharing their art and giving us the opportunity to learn from each other. Now, pretty much the rest of this painting is just refining details, refining, punching up some of those contrasts of dark and light, and just using the tip of the brush. Not much water, not much paint, just little bits. And because at this point right now, you just want to pull out details. You don't want to make any huge major changes because a major change at this point 
could add, you know, another half hour to your painting. So I'm trying really hard to just do the tiniest little touches of paint, little tiny highlights, little bits of extra dark. Some of these highlights now are actually pure white. Some of the highlights, like on the back that's going to be coming up here, is actually, it has a little bit of a blue in it. But first, I want to finish out his head. I want to get those white stripes in there. And I want to get the little shiny bits in the head stronger. But tiny little things, tiny touches of the brush. So... If you ever have any questions about how I'm doing something, please leave that down below in the comment section. I do read the questions, I do answer questions, and I want to help you be successful. Now, I don't do critiques of other people's artwork because I'm a beginner myself and I am working on my technique and learning how to do things my way, the way I'm finding it easiest for me. But that doesn't mean that it's your way. And I'm trying to put tools out there for you to use and suggestions that I have found comfortable and helpful for me, but it may not be exactly what you need. So remember that there are tons of people on YouTube that can help you with more techniques, more ways of learning and growing, and you don't have to stay with just one media. A lot of the techniques I'm using in my gouache paintings are coming from watercolor and from acrylic. I am taking those things and using them together to make my paintings in gouache. Being able to layer these whites and bright colors over the top of the dark and being able to start out with a dark background is just totally amazing to me. I love this media and right now it is really making my heart happy. <laughs> so find the things that are making you happy. Find the things right now that give you joy and bring you a lightness to your spirit. And so now, more details, because you know, that's what this last, probably six or seven minutes is going to be. It's going to be details. I am going to bring some highlights into the head. I'm going to increase some shadows in a few spots in the head also and around the body. It's, it's details. And I don't really know what else to say about that, but that it's details. I am finding it difficult. I'm, I'm usually talking the entire time through my video. As I'm doing it, I can say what it is I'm doing, but looking ahead and trying to remember everything that I did, that's tricky. You know, how do you explain something that you've already done? And then you're, and this was like a couple weeks ago that I recorded the video and now I'm doing this voiceover. So some people, they do a lot more cutting and condensing the videos down when they do voiceovers like this. I totally understand why now because it's very difficult to fill this time just talking about the painting. And that's why you've been getting some little insights into what's going on with me or how I, you know, do things because it's, it's just, it's tricky. It's tricky. And so I want, I'm going to keep asking you guys questions. So do you have something that you find really challenging to do that you went ahead and did it. That's kind of this for me, doing this voiceover. I find voiceovers to be so challenging 
uh, they stretch my ability to come up with entertaining ways to describe things. I don't know how else to put that. Because I want to be entertaining. I want you guys to enjoy the time that you're spending doing this. But wow, you know, I have a lot more fun actually painting. Oh, painting that eye there. <laughs> yes, I painted out all of the highlights. They're all going to come back. They're just going to be a little bit brighter and a little bit sharper, a little bit shinier eye. But right now, I just wanted to get a little bit more of that red-orange color of the eye in there. Because really, that, that eye and the bill are almost exactly the same color. And because I was painting on top of a black background, it just seemed like the eye wasn't quite vibrant enough. So let's get that vibrancy in there. Put the pupil in, put some of those outlines because the eyelid or the rim around his eye, it it's almost like dragony scaled skin around the eyeball. And it, it has a lot of texture to it. So I want to show that with a little bit of the highlights and shadows. It, it, makes, it makes a huge difference in the believability of it at the end. So, you know, you're going to play with it. You're going to make it whatever it's going to be. And this one, I am really happy. I am so excited that I have made it this far. I've got about two minutes left. So I want to make sure that I get these final highlights in. I took some white into the green and some white into the blue and uh, white into the violet to start dropping in some of those highlights and they just make him pop. So I need you to remember that you can do any painting even paintings that you think are beyond your skill set right now, you can do any painting. It's just the amount of time that you take. And looking at the way to break it down into smaller chunks makes it more achievable. So I tend to work on my paintings and my artwork on these videos in chunks so that you can work on something. Pause the video, work on it some more, come back, watch the section, pause, go work on that section, come back. So you don't have to sit down and do the whole thing through on the very first go. I always suggest watch the whole video all the way through because you never know when eight minutes in I decide to change up the entire drawing of my duck. You wouldn't know that if you hadn't continued watching. Final details, final details. So now we are going to put in the little ripples right around the body of the duck. The duck is pushing through the water, so the ripples are pushing up against him. The water is shining and reflecting a little bit there. We don't have to do any more down in the water. We're actually not doing much more anywhere except those ripples. I want to take this moment to thank you so much for being here. Remember, there's so many ways that you can do things that are creative that don't require going out into public. Take a look at all of the videos on my playlist. I have a ton of them. There's lots of creators making videos out there on the internet for you to watch. And remember that you can do something creative every day. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.